Mr. Speaker, I will urge the members to vote yes for this. I'd like to offer several quick reasons why. During this debate, we admittedly heard a lot of very personal and sometimes tragic stories. We've also heard some about hope and something about fear. Winners and losers in the ways that all of this was positioned in the chamber here today. But I believe that the gentleman from the Lehigh Valley indicated that we should be focused on facts. I believe that he is correct. The facts that we are looking at are as follows. Under the Affordable Care Act, as passed in the previous administration, there are two things that are certain. One is that we will be given less money to supplement our Medicaid expenditures. And two, we will certainly be given more responsibility to manage that as a state. Regardless of what happens in that debate going forward, those two things are certain. So it is our job to take the facts that we have and balance them. I believe the prime sponsor of the bill articulated very well the issue and the area that we're looking at. We're talking about less than 6% of the current population. You're likely to, on average, take $17,626 per year in services for a premium that would start at $600 a year. But the real question and the real fact that we should look at, I believe, is this. Do you trust the administration? Do you trust the administration? I do, because when you look at history, I believe that we've been more generous or more reasonable in how this is positioned. The prime sponsor pointed out the current law is 200% of poverty. The Affordable Care Act subsidies stop at 400% of poverty. This starts at 1,000%. Mr. Speaker, while we've spent a lot of time focusing on this, this one portion of the bill, I'd like to highlight some of the other pieces because I believe that they're important in order to get our Medicaid spending under control at the budgetary level. We heard the rate of increase is 6 to 7 percent. Revenues are flat to 3 percent. When I started in the healthcare industry over 20 years ago, Things were very different. We paid bills in a different way. It was a fee-for-service model. And the Affordable Care Act has focused us on a quality-based model, where we reward outcomes, not just the number of visits that you have. Contained in this bill are two pieces that I think will supplement that and continue to transform our health care system. This bill would require DHS to issue a request for information in order to evaluate the efficiency of our programs. They have a provision for the total population or coordinated care delivery for groups. Many of us have health care systems that are doing just this already. They're being innovative. They're saving money. They're also having better outcomes. I believe that's something that we should encourage. I believe that that is something that is good. Mr. Speaker, like many of the residents and the taxpayers we talked about today, we're putting some reasonable limits on the churning or the changing of insurance policies. They have the same exceptions that many of us have at our own employers. A serious life event, relocation into a different area, or a verified health condition which requires a specialist not covered by the MCO. We're asking government to live like many of the residents in our areas already live. The gentleman that spoke earlier from Box about the IMD waiver, Mr. Speaker, this is very important, and several folks have alluded to it. We need a waiver in order to offer services beyond 15 days so that we can be successful with treating opioid addiction and the heroin problem, not simply have a revolving door in and out of patients that aren't successful. When you look at the supplemental appropriation waiver request, I know that that's a mouthful, and as one of my colleagues did earlier, they translated it. This is very simple. We're going to ask the government to take the money that they already have and have lapsed and put elsewhere to spend this money more efficiently before they come and ask for supplemental waivers. Taxpayers expect us to do that. Our residents expect us to deliver the best services that we can 
at the least cost to them while caring for everyone. I believe with these pieces in the bill, we can do that. Mr. Speaker, when you look at the payments to providers for out-of-home placements, the electronic asset verification of MA eligibility for the aged, blind, and disabled, Mr. Speaker, that's required federally and been worked on by many of the stakeholders. The nursing home facility assessment and the ambulatory surgical facility study all will look at and streamline these processes as well as we move forward and as we try to deliver better care at a better cost. Mr. Speaker, that is a goal I believe that we all should be for, and I would urge a yes vote.